Today we're going to be talking about skills for wingers, binge eating, and cost of working with strength coaches. Welcome to episode 13 of Run It Straight. Hey guys, just a quick warning before today's episode. I'm just recording this after we finished filming. I happened to turn my mic off accidentally because I'm an idiot. So we will be using the sound from Chris's mic. It's a little bit tinny, but you can st still hear what I'm saying. My apologies again, please enjoy the episode. Cheers. All right, our first question comes today <coughs> via Instagram. What training would be suitable for a winger on a daily basis? This is one of those things like how long is a piece of string type questions. Uh, firstly, the same thing that we would say with everyone is you've got to do your, your physical preparation or your athletic prep, whatever what you want to call it, your strength and conditioning stuff. So, you know, your speed, strength, power, your nutrition needs to be on point, flexibility and mobility, all of that sort of stuff. Um, moving on from that, what else would you say? I'd say it's just a bit more of a targeted approach when it comes to field session work. Um, a bit more of the turning and chase, uh, sort of when you know the halfback puts a grubber through and you need to turn and chase and get there before your opponent. opponent. Um, so sprint training as well would be quite handy, uh, as well as uh, hands. Hands. You've got to have really good hands. Everything super. High ball, important. everything. Yeah, high ball. There's a lot of times when everything that the team has done for the last 15 minutes, 20 minutes, it could even be the whole game, rests on, you know, it's a long ball being thrown and you need to be able to catch it, you need to be able to move it. If you're on that left wing to this side to try and palm off your opposition winger and you need to put it down, mm -hmm. and you might do nothing leading up, you might not touch the ball for six or seven minutes up until then, and then you have five seconds when what you do is super important. It's not like you're one of the second rowers or the front rowers where you're getting, you know, 20 and 30 carries in a game and there's a lot of defensive stuff and offensive stuff that you're doing. Your opportunities might be few in a particular game, so you need to execute on when, on when those opportunities present themselves. Um, so you really need to hammer your handling and just get it on point, yeah? Yeah, for sure. Um, everything that he was saying, uh, like I said, catching long balls, awkward passes, skills that you're gonna be practicing on your own. There's a lot of winger play which you do need to be, it's things that we've talked about before, it's pushing up and it's supporting the ball carrier and all of those sorts of things. But what you can do on your own is it's it's bomb reception, it's, I don't know if you've got a wall you can put the ball into, it's grubber reception, it's throwing a ball against the wall and catching it, um, so it's coming off on different angles. Uh, the, the skills that you're going to need on that field, like we said, once or twice in a game, they're only going to be super good when you've been spending hours and hours and hours honing your craft. The old saying is, is you get praised in public for what it is that you've done in private. If you've spent all of those times, all, all, the, all the, the hours that you need to, because it literally it's going to be hours, to get your hands to that point so that when it comes to boom, boom, you put the ball down and you do your job. Um, yeah. Get used to talking, because uh, you are the person on the furthest part of the field that you can see the rest of the field. Um, so can communicate. Can you do that on your own though? Because his question was, on a daily basis. Okay, so if it's no, then no. You, yeah, yeah. If you're yeah. a bit weird and you want to go for that, then talk to yourself in the field. Go down the park and you can yell out, "Move left, move right." I'm here. I'm free on your inside. Um, but that's look. If you've on a daily basis, if you've got like this, would work out better if you've got a mate. You can go down and you can put kicks at each other. Um, low balls, high balls. You can practice literally running as though you're, you're, it's a backline play and you're running down that sideline and he can throw a nice long ball at you. He can even throw a long ball, which he, maybe he's aiming it at your knees so you get used to taking it down low. And it's all of those little things. If you watch the NRL and you see the guys, the way that they can play particular plays, it's again running down that left side, taking the ball, shifting it into your left hand side so you've got that right palm free and then practicing being able to place it down. And getting competent with that both sides. You see a lot of guys who, oh yeah, I'm a left winger, but they're actually not very good at carrying the ball in their left hand. Most, if you look at most right-handed um, uh, football players, league players, they tend to want to carry the ball in their right hand and palm with their left. But that's not going to be very useful if you're playing on that left edge. You, it needs, you need to get good at doing it the other way around, whether you're a centre or a winger. You need to get improve your dexterity and your ball handling skills with that left hand so that you can be putting the ball down where and when you need to be. Yeah, uh, I'd say uh, practicing uh, actually diving and finishing off the try yeah. after receiving a poor pass. Um, actually, referring back to uh, personal experience, first time I ever played wing, um, 
I received one of those balls and, and I went to dive and I ended up taking out the, uh, <laughs> the uh, what's it called? Corner post? The corner post. Um, so that keep practicing that. That was out back then though, wasn't it? Yeah, that was out back then. Yeah, yeah. yeah not anymore. But, not anymore. Uh, we couldn't do that back then. Yeah, that's right. When he was young. So just young. maybe practice that as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, hope that's helpful for your question. Next question uh, comes again from Instagram. I'm a big guy who plays front row in under 15s. I go pretty well, but only last about 10 minutes. I've been trying to lose weight, but I tend to binge eat every day at around three o'clock or just after, after being really good throughout the day. Any tips on how I can stop binge eating? Look, we're not nutritionists, so I would say ideally go and see a nutritionist. There's someone who is qualified and skilled to be able to help you in this department, but some advice that um, we have found useful with some of the, the boys that we've had in the program that we've worked with. Um, number one, look at dehydration. A lot of people who think they're hungry, they're not actually hungry, they're just thirsty. The general rule of thumb is around about a litre for every 25 kilos of body weight. So, I mean, it says here you're a big guy. I don't know what that means, but let's assume that you're 100 kilos we're looking at around about four litres. So one litre for every 25 kilos of body weight, around about four litres of water um, a day that you should be getting in. Um, that's, a, that's a good rule of thumb. There's a lot of people who think that they're hungry and they overeat. <coughs> it's one of the body's ways to try and get more fluid into you. It's simply, you know, we're not talking about biscuits and, uh, you know, cookies and bread and things like that that, exactly, that don't exactly have a high water content. But, you know, you can think about if you're wandering around in the bush, you're going to be looking for fruits and berries and vegetables and things like that, which do have a higher water content. So oftentimes your body will, will uh, drive you to try and eat those foods, even though it's really just trying to get the hydration and the water out of it. Um, so that'll be one thing. Protein has a much higher satiation level. What's a satiation level? Um, it fills you up. Fills you up, makes you feel full. You tend to, very few people will overeat on protein. We typically give um, the guys that we work with, whether it's in the program or even, um, you know, PT clients, uh, we tend to, to give them a protein goal to, to, to shoot for. And very rare, like, did you ever find anyone eating too much protein? No. No, it doesn't happen. Um, and what happens is when they eat a fair bit, they get full and they stop eating. Carbohydrates and fats, people can eat until the cows come home, um, which they do. And... That's why they tend to gain weight because you really cannot overeat on that. So try and make sure that you get your protein in and increase that protein level a little bit. Um, and you might find that you're far less inclined to binge eat and to overeat. Uh, don't wait until you're ravenous because like you said, the binge eating is a bit of an issue. I'm assuming that you're sort of like white knuckling, you're holding on as hard as you can. You know, I'm doing really well, I'm doing really well, I'm doing really well. I can't stand this anymore. I've got to eat, I've got to eat, I've got to eat. So you get home from school and you pick out. That's not going to work. If you let yourself get to the point where you're really that hungry, you just, you're gonna demolish whatever is in front of you. You need to manage your calories better throughout the day so that you don't, and, and look for the times when, most people have this now. There's a lot of people that are just working sort of nine to five, and for them it's maybe three o'clock in the afternoon. It's like, yeah, that's when they start to go and looking for you know, a chocolate bar or a packet of chips or something. They start to get nibbly. So we will say to those people, well, maybe you need to, have a little bit of protein at two or three in the afternoon so that you're not starting to get really ravenous and you can nip that in the bud before it turns into like this big blazing fire type thing. Um, what would you suggest around that? Uh, using my fitness pal correctly. Yeah. Uh, so if you're tracking your calories, you know, first of all, how much nutrition is going in, how much protein you're actually having. Um, so if it's too low, then obviously that will be the first thing I'd yeah. suggest, increasing your protein levels, as you mentioned. Uh, but also the time of the day you're eating, mm. uh, spread the calories out because it is, as you mentioned as well, if you wait until you're starving, um, then you're just going to keep overeating. Yeah, you're gonna overeat. But if you space it out properly, then you, it actually refers to blood sugar levels as well. It keeps it a bit steadier so you don't get cravings for sugar or, or anything like that. Yeah. And um, with the app, a lot of people that we find, this is probably a big thing. When you're tracking the food, don't do it at like eight o'clock at night when Okay, now, when it's I'll too late. Yeah, now I'll track everything I've eaten for the day. And then, oh crap, I've gone over by 500 calories. Do it as you're going along. So you have your breakfast, enter that into the app. You have, if it's a snack or you have lunch, enter the, so you know where you're at. It's like, it's like keeping score, so to speak. Um, so you know, okay, if I've got 2,000 calories for the day and I've just had lunch and I'm at, at 11 or 1,200, I've got another 800. And then maybe even, you know what, do it before you eat the food. 
So this way you go, okay, well for dinner, we were gonna be having steak and mashed potato or whatever. And you put that into the app and you're, okay, well if I have that, that's actually gonna use up all my calories. So I can't have a snack in the afternoon. Maybe that's not such a good idea. Maybe I'll get rid of, what if I get rid of the potatoes and I just have like broccoli and cauliflower or something like that. And then all of a sudden you've got 300 calories. Okay, I can have a 300 calorie snack at three o'clock. How much protein do I, okay, I'll have a little bit of protein and then I can have, maybe I can have, you know, a couple of eggs and a piece of toast or something. So use the app, don't log at the end of the day and rather than, oh, well that was a crap day and then you do it on Tuesday. Oh, well that was a crap day and then you do it on Thursday. This tracking thing doesn't work, which we see people do that all the time. And yeah, it works, you're just not doing it right. So a better way would be to track each meal as you go along. The best way would be to track ahead of time and just plan out, I'm gonna eat this and I'm gonna eat this and I'm gonna eat this. That's the best way to do it. Yeah, I was gonna Um, say that. Now the last little thing, uh, it's a protocol that we use with some people and I'm yet to have this one fail. It's a little bit of a, a play on something which I got from a, a mentor of mine, Charles Poliquin, a number of years ago. Let's say it's, it's, it's uh, 2.30 and you know every time when it gets to 3 o'clock I'm really hungry. Here's what I, I want you to drink, like 500 mils of just water. You're going to wait 15 minutes. Okay? If you're still feeling that hunger building, you're going to have like a like a Diet Coke or something like that. Some sort of non-sugar sweetened drink that's got very, very low calories. I'm not saying do this every day, don't get all uh, artificial sweeteners. Just drink the damn Diet Coke, it's not going to kill you, okay? Wait another 15 minutes. (coughs) If you're still hungry, have a protein shake. And we're not talking about a bulker that's a million calories, we're talking about like some whey protein that's, what, 100 to maybe 120 calories? Yeah. Have that, wait another 15, 20 minutes. So by now you should have waited 45 minutes, maybe up to an hour in between having the water, have the, the, um, the diet or the Coke, no sugar, whatever you want to call it, Pepsi Max, that kind of thing, then have your protein. If you're still hungry after that, wait 15 minutes, brush your teeth. That works. Try eating something that you like after brushing your teeth. It tastes really, really, really gross. You won't do it again. I've never had anyone follow this protocol. I've had so many people that I've given it to and they all come back and go, oh, wow, that really, really works. So the thing is, though, that you need to use this before you get to that super ravenous point. Because otherwise, you'll have the water and then you'll be like, you wait 10 minutes, nah, this isn't working. And then that's when the cookies get destroyed. So do not destroy the cookies. Start the protocol, start it before you get super ravenously hungry. Um, and chances are you will be, sw- like, like we said, oh, was it the first point, second point, dehydration? If it is dehydration, because you've waited an hour, you're going to be, if, de- if dehydration is an issue, you're going to be more, much more hydrated by that point, so you're not going to be hungry. Look, if you do all of those things and you're still really hungry, obviously there's some other issues there. Maybe you genuinely, your metabolism's running at a fast rate. Maybe you're not eating enough food. Maybe you're starving yourself. Maybe you've cut your calories. You're like, okay, I'm just getting 1,200 calories. And if you're a 100 kilo guy and you're, what, 15 years old, that's a really bad idea. That's so you, maybe you've got to just eat more food. So this is why I'm saying try this and this and this. And at the, at the end of that, you're still hungry. Go for your life. Um, eat food, not junk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do we say? The old, not, not, not that it's a massive thing, but you know, either eat something that had parents or eat something that the thing that had parents would have eaten. So if you can pull it out of the ground or off a tree, you can eat it. Or if you could kill it and cook it, eat it. Okay, that's, that's what we would term real food, right? Yeah, well, I haven't heard that before. I like that one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, next question comes again from Instagram, Anonymous. I have heard you speak about joining a gym or seeing a qualified strength and conditioning coach. Um, but what do I do if I can't afford the gym fees, much less a strength coach? You want to say something before I, I get on a rant? Yes. Um, not the first time we've come across this issue. Um, and only a few people are motivated enough. So if you're one of those few people, good job. Uh, if you're not, listen carefully. Get out and find yourself a job. Get a job. <laughs> it's not, but people say like, this is, this is the resource argument. It's, oh, you know, I don't have the money or I don't have this. That is absolute rubbish. It's not that you don't have the resources, it's that you're not being resourceful enough. Uh, if you, let's say you're going to join a local gym, it's like what, $20 a week maybe yeah. Yeah, for a good gym? Yeah. Um, so $20 a week. If you want to train with a good strength coach, maybe it's, it's $100 for an hour to maybe get one session and then 
good strength coach is going to be giving you some stuff that you're going to be able to do in your own time. So you might need to see that guy once a week. Make sure that your technique's on point and they should be progressing your program probably every three to four weeks. There's a whole lot of things that go into that. But you pay your 20 bucks for your gym membership so you can get in the gym two, three, four days a week. And you pay to see strength coach. It's $120 a week. Like he was saying, get a job. There's like Macca's, KFC, Subway, Domino's, Pizza Hut. All of those places are looking to employ people. Um, Coles, Woolies, Target, Big W. Go and knock on doors and wash cars, mow lawns. Well, I mean, I just went through what, like 15 different things that you could be doing. It's either 15 or 11, I don't know. Um, there's heaps of things that you can be doing, but, and then people, oh, but I don't have time. We know that you've got time. We know that the boys come in here and we look at their phone. We had someone, who was it? We, I, were, you might, were you here? You might have been at the field. 14 hours. He was staring at his phone on one day. 14 hours. The same guy said, oh, I don't have time to train. 14 hours. If you're like <laughs> sleep eight, that leaves 10, sorry, that leaves two. There's only two hours on that day that he wasn't staring at his phone. Don't tell me that you have time. Everyone has time, whether you do it at, on nights after school, after you get your school work done and everything else like that, whether you work, and you just, oh, I'm gonna work an eight hour shift on a Saturday, or whether you work a Saturday, find the time. There is enough time. It's not resources, it's that you're not being resourceful enough and you're making excuses. Now we said it's 120 a week. If that's $16 an hour, which is what most of those places you can get paid um, to work in them, that's eight hours. It's nothing, it's two four hour shifts. It's, it's a couple of three hours. Didn't happen. A couple of, it didn't happen. It's a couple of three hour shifts and a two hour shift. It is, it maybe it's just one day on a Saturday and you work from, I don't know, seven in the morning and what's, what's, what's seven plus? 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, it's like 3 o'clock in the afternoon and maybe you go and you mow lawns, you rake leaves, you do whatever it is. Don't give me any of this garbage that you, you can't afford to do it. And there's good strength coaches. Let's say, look, if you're in Sydney and, and, and you're interested in rugby league and you're interested in strength and conditioning, there's guys I know in the Shire that I could send you to. Send us a message on Instagram and say, oh, I can't get to you guys, even though that's still an excuse. But anyway, there's guys in the Shire I know, there's guys out Campbelltown way that I go, uh, Penrith way. North side. There's people everywhere that you can find. If you're out in the country, there will be somewhere where there'll be some trainers, and maybe it's a PT, but they've got some strength and conditioning training, they've got some background. Maybe they train MMA fighters, or maybe they've done boxers, or they've done some other kind of athlete. As long as they've got their SNC stuff, they're going to, particularly for where you guys are at, which is just starting out, they're going to have the skill set needed to help you. The better level of strength coach is going to be better, which is what we always say go and see an experienced strength and conditioning coach. Number one. Secondly, that they've got experience working with rugby league would be even better. Or rugby league, rugby union, those kind of um, uh, strength and power sports. I don't know if money is just an excuse. If you want to have a crack, see what you can do and you will find a way. Uh, you know, think of it this way. Either you can just sit there on the couch on the weekend and watch your team and you can cheer or you can be in the stands cheering and yeah, yeah, and you'll just be a passenger to what's going on. Or you can actually have a crack at trying to be someone who has, uh, uh, has the ability to change the outcome of the game by being on the field. Let's say you get to 25, 26, 27, and you don't make it, that's fine. Most people don't make it, I didn't make it, he didn't make it, okay? But it's gonna be a whole lot easier for you to be able to live with yourself knowing that, you know what, you had a crack and you put all in, and it just wasn't meant to be. And there's, there's, there's definitely very few people that are like that, that don't have any regrets about it, because look, I did everything that I actually, and that I honestly could, and it just didn't end up happening for me. Whereas the vast majority, and we're talking 95% of people, because we see them come into the program and then leave the program. Um, people who we look at them like, man, a lot of ability, a lot of talent. If he just works hard for the next two, three years, he could really do something. They don't want to work hard, let alone for like six months. Uh, six months is two months, let alone two or three years to see what they're capable of doing. I'm really getting off track here. Um, at the end of the day, you can have results or you can have excuses. You can't have both. So go out, get a job, earn what you need to, flip stuff. One of the boys I was talking to the other day about doing that. Go to garage sales and buy stuff and then sell it online using like, you can go on eBay or Facebook Marketplace is really good. I was having a chat to a client of mine. Um, uh, someone that he works with was going out doing that on weekends and they bought a, uh, it, was, it was just garbage. It was some, some toys that someone was throwing out and it's like a little action figure toy that was literally on a tip out that they picked it up in a cardboard box. He went online and he sold the toy for 140 bucks. It took him all of seven minutes. Okay, so excuses or results? Anything else you want to add to that? No, no, no. I think that was... <clears throat>
pretty end good. of rant. Um, all right, guys, please like us. Nikki, what are we doing with this bit? What are we like? Share, subscribe. Like, share, subscribe um, on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Please send your questions through. We've had some uh, really good ones of late, but please do keep sending them through. Get as specific as you possibly can. Give us a little bit more details, like with that last fella, not this one, the, the one before that. He was said he's big and he's under 15s. Give us some height and some weight because that gives us a little bit more yeah. clarity and we can get a bit more specific with um, what we would recommend. Uh, cheers. We'll see you in the next episode.